Little Lessons with Griffin. Hey, Karen. What's up? Why is there a tree in the house? Well, apparently there's a story about Martin Luther. And one day or one night, he was walking through the woods and he could see like the stars twinkling behind and through the branches of the evergreen trees. And he just thought it was so beautiful that he wanted to take that look and that feeling home to his family. And so he cut a tree down and they put candles on the tree to kind of make it look like the starlight twinkling. And that's at least that's what the internet says. Sounds dangerous. Now, that's why we don't do that anymore. But I like to think of the Christmas tree as like this tribute to our cloud of witnesses. There's ornaments on there that were my grandmother's. It reminds me of Christmas at her house. There are ornaments for those who were no longer with us but meant a lot to us. There are ornaments that we made at church with people who walked with us on our faith journey. And there are ornaments that commemorate important moments in our lives. There's also an ornament of Barb from Stranger Things, but I can't really explain that one. Okay, I get it, but what's with the star on top? Oh, well, some people put a star on top of their tree to remember the Magi who followed that special star to find Jesus when he was born. Other people put angels on top of their tree and other things can go on top too, but that's why we have a star. All right, I'm following. Now explain the candy on the tree. Okay, so the candy canes. Um, this one's a funny story. So apparently, like, there a long time ago, there was a choir director, and he directed a children's choir, and they were trying to put together their Christmas Eve nativity pageant, and um, the kids were just crazy, because they're kids, that's what we do. And he found a way to keep them quiet, and that was candy. But what he had was the candy maker make them into candy canes. So they look like shepherd's crooks. And so that way the kids kind of kept busy and kept quiet eating their candy. That's a good one. We probably need a few more candy canes around this house. Anyway, tell me about this wreath. Well, Griff, this is our Advent wreath. We light a candle each Sunday to remember parts of the Christmas story as we wait for Jesus. There's a candle for hope, to remember the prophets who told us that the birth of Jesus was coming. A candle for peace that reminds us that light shines in dark places and the peace that we find in Jesus. We light a candle of joy to remember the joy that was felt when Jesus was born. And we light a candle of love that reminds me of God because God is love. And the big one is the Christ candle and that one is all for Jesus. That's pretty cool. Now, tell me why do you people put a bunch of light bulbs on the outside of your house? Well, Griff, we just do that to celebrate the joy of the season. And also, like, it helps us remember that there's light in the darkness. And the wintertime can be dark and cold. And light always reminds us that Jesus is coming and he's coming to save us from the darkness. That's helpful. Still doesn't explain the hundreds of nutcrackers and the three extra Christmas trees. But we can talk about that later. Everything holds joy and memories, and that's what the season's all about. It all has special meaning in my heart. Pizza Nutcracker has a place in your heart? Okay. Well, now that we've talked about all that, do you want to join me and the people watching at home in prayer, Griff? Let's do it. Dear God, throughout Advent, help us to find hope, peace, joy, and love in the sights and sounds around us. Let them be a reminder of the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. And all God's children said, Amen.